happy Sabbath to you, our beloved viewers. Welcome to the Weekly Gospel. I'm your host, Amazing Katamanda. You know how we do it right here. It, this is the show that comes your way every Saturdays at 10 hours. We get to bring you guys different kinds of artists. You guys get to request for the people that you want to see. And uh, I must say it's a very good show for people that want to get into music. Those that want to know the do's and the don'ts about music. Or just people that love worship. People just that love to sing. People that just love to praise through music music this is the right show for you so if you are just joining us you're welcome and uh, I can promise you that we're going to have a very wonderful time together you know we are in January and what I'm trying to do today is just remove like the worry from the January yeah 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 so that we can just um, enjoy uh, the presence of God together even as we are worshiping praising and yeah just giving glory to God who created us um, to everybody that's celebrating their birthdays today, happy birthday to everybody. Those that are doing their weddings, celebrate in peace. We wish you all the best, even in your unions. Yeah, right? Okay, uh, so today I'm joined by uh, an artist who's going to be telling us more about himself. He's, I, I don't know if I can say he's an upcoming or he's an established. Well, he will tell us all that. Or you are the ones that are going to decide or judge on that one. So let's just get to one of the songs. And in this one... Uh, it's titled, um, my goodness, it's really hard for me to pronounce this. I, I, I hope and pray that I'm not going to mess it up. It's titled Imbo. I hope I haven't messed it up. So let's just get to his video. And then on the other side, he'll be joining me for a chat. So enjoy the song. Something the one in me is greater than the one in you. So even if you try to do the things you do, you will never make me lose my focus. Nah, I ain't coming down. I still stand for the king, the 
the one who's got the crown, got the throne. Even if when you point your mumkango, Zani pays the chair, we know, and that you know. <laughs> And welcome to the Weekly Gospel for those that are just joining us. This is the Weekly Gospel with me, Amazing Katamanda. Uh, this is a program that comes your way every Saturday at 10 hours. We get to bring you guys your favorite personalities. You request for them and then we work some magic. We bring them right into the campus of your homes even as we are um, experiencing this pandemic that is uh, affecting everybody we urge everyone at home that stay home don't go anywhere make sure that you adhere to the guidelines that the Ministry of Health has put in place it's for your own good and do it for your loved ones as well um, I'm joined by my guest here let him just say his name because I don't want to mess it up like I really don't want to mess it up because we come from the same place like the Eastern right yeah yeah so let me not mess your name up can you just tell us a bit about yourself who you are and how you just got into music Ah, all right. Thank you so much that you didn't uh, introduce me. Because <laughs> everything about me is Eastern, Eastern. So yeah. it's, it's hard to pronounce. My yeah. Phone, you know what? All right. So my name is Apus. Apus. Yes. What does it mean? Uh, th those are my names: Emmanuel, Peter, Adinafe, Sakara. Together, it makes Apus. So oh. Got okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, Apus is a is a gospel artist. Mm -hmm. As well as, uh, should I say, a man of God or a prophet? Yeah, I know, but there is this other prophet. Ministry. Yeah, it's a prophet. What do you see, Papa? Ministry. What do you see, Papa? <laughs> <laughs> hey. <laughs> okay, on that one, mm -hmm. it's not really like um, I intend to do it, mm -hmm. but it's a calling that is in me where even when I'm walking, sometimes God will just speak a message yeah. about somebody that I deliver. Don't but worry. for music, is where now it's in me that I want to do it. Oh, okay. Don't yes. worry, I do understand because. I also have that gift, so wow. I definitely understand. I just, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, lighten up the mood and all wow. that. Wow, I'm glad that we, we relate. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so can you just tell us how the journey of music started? All right, it started way back in school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it started way back in school. I used to, 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 to do freestyles. Mm -hmm. Like, I started as a secular artist, by the way. Yeah. So I used to, to do freestyles. I, I, you know, I never knew that I was a rapper. Mm -hmm. But what happened is this, um, you know, I found some guys playing an instrument and they were rapping. Yeah. So it was fun where everybody's clapping and all that. Yeah. So I was like, let me just try to go in. That mm -hmm. was at school. Let me try to go in and see what's going to happen. So I was just, you know, mm -hmm. like trying to flow. Yeah. So I rapped. And then to my surprise, it's like the first time I rapped, I rapped better than people who've been rapping. Really? So everybody clapped. Like, ah, this guy, this guy, what? <laughs> and I was asking myself, saying, ah, what's amazing about what I've done? Because yeah. I also don't know, I was just talking. So I just put certain words together, together and I said, let me rap them. Mm -hmm. Then everybody clapped and they said, wow. So only one person from those people knew that I wasn't a rapper. Then I asked him to say, ah, why did people clap? And then he said, that's rap. Mm -hmm. you like you were on point. Yeah. And I was like, oh, really? That's how I discovered that, okay, there was that thing in me. Mm -hmm. So it was... Uh, it was a challenge because I grew up, I was raised in a Christian home and I yeah. grew up in a Christian home. Mm -hmm. So it was a challenge for me to actually, you know, continue doing secular music mm -hmm. uh, because that's, that wasn't me. I've never yeah. been one who's been, you know, uh, of the world or what. Like, like it's been hard for me to relate with the world. So mm -hmm. even before I got saved, I, I had that consciousness where I always, I always found myself doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. I've never smoked before. I've never drank before. I don't know even how beer tastes and all that. So it's like those are the things I was rapping about when I started. I was talking about drugs. Yeah. I was talking about women. Mm -hmm. You know, I was talking about beef when there is actually no one I'm beefing. Yeah. So it was hard. And then what was tough was for me to switch that to gospel because mm -hmm. I knew gospel to be all about worship, praise, Definitely. and yeah. rumba and all that. Yeah. So now... I, was, I found myself rapping and, uh, you know, doing secular music, not because I won, but because I, I thought church 
was not going to accept what I do. No. Oh, so okay. people came through now and started telling me, you know, you can still do the same thing that you're doing, but you can just change the message. Oh, and okay. then you put Christian stuff. Then I said, okay, let me try. Mm -hmm. If people won't accept, I'll continue to be a secular <laughs> artist. But if they will, then I will uh -huh. be myself now and do what I love. Yeah. So that's how my journey started. And then from there, I tried. It was hard, for, though, for people to accept it. Mm -hmm. But I think it, it was the will of God. That's why I I, you know, there was that perseverance in me. Yeah. And I just did it con consistently, despite the fact that you go to certain ministries and they tell you, you know, this is not of God and all that. But I thank God, anyway, that now it's getting to the point where people can relate with rap music and they mm -hmm. accept it. Mm -hmm. Because if they didn't, I was going to go back to secular. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, 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 I don't know. Like almost every hip hop artist that I've had on this show, they said the same thing. Like, you know, it's not easy for the church to just accept the fact that hip hop can be a way of also preaching the gospel. It's, yeah. It doesn't have to be all the time worship and praise. And can you say this is the reason why we don't see like a lot of young people be Being in the house of God? Yes. The things of God. Yeah, mm -hmm. true. You agree with that? Yes, I agree. Because I've actually heard, not only myself, but I've heard other young men mm -hmm. telling me to say, you know, um, you are the reason why I'm a Christian. You are the reason why I listen to gospel music because I can relate with what you do. Mm -hmm. So imagine if there was no one who, who's doing what I'm doing. Imagine if we had no rappers. Mm -hmm. It means those people um, who love rap music, we, we are not going to find themselves comfortable in Christianity yeah. because why? They don't have what they need. They don't find it. They don't find the peace and the comfort that they need. Mm -hmm. So it's actually very easy to ev evangelize through rap because, yeah, worship is, you know, where you are relating with God. Yes, like praise is where, when you're praising God. But the mm -hmm. question is, how do you praise a God you don't know? Mm -hmm. How do you worship a God you don't know? Yeah. So for you to introduce God to people who, are, you know, who don't know God, you mm -hmm. need to relate with them in your yeah, language, definitely. the way you talk. Mm -hmm. So now rap is a way of evangelizing. Mm -hmm. So we evangelize and then we bring people to God. Yeah. And I think um, from something that I've observed from like your videos, you use local language yes, when it comes yes. to rap. <laughs> I'm like, we have a lot of young people that don't want to embrace uh, our languages or our uh, tribes. They, they just want to do what the Western world is doing, what everybody is doing. It's all about the English, Chinyanja, Chiwemba, like, Ntabo, yo, yes. you know? <laughs> so, like, wh wh what keeps you going? Like, what keeps motivating you to even just do music in your local language? Ah, oh, all right. Um, you know, I have, um, I, I can say I've never seen anyone who's doing what I'm doing. Like myself personally. Yeah, I, I don't think I have either because everyone is doing English. Yes, like they're doing in English. Yeah. You, you can hear traditional songs, you find they're still English. Mm -hmm. You can hear, you know, rap music, but you find they is English. Mm -hmm. But for, for, for someone to come with that style where, you know, it sounds like Ngoni, it sounds yeah. like, you know, Nyao Nyao, but still there is the gospel there. Mm -hmm. I think it takes one who accept, you know, the who accept who they are. If you are Lozi, if you are from Mazabuka, or if you are from, you know, Tonga-speaking people, mm -hmm. you need to love your tribe. Yeah. Because when you love your tribe and you love where you're coming from, you'll be proud, mm -hmm. you'll represent it. Mm -hmm. But it's like people are not proud. They think, you know, if you come, maybe it's embarrassing or something if you come and you're singing Chewa. Mm -hmm. But I think when you apply creativity, there is nothing embarrassing. Mm -hmm. Because any gene can fit. Any genre of songs can fit. Mm -hmm. If you want to put the same chewa, you can put it in trap music. Mm -hmm. If you want, you can put it in rap music. If you want, you can do Afro pop. Mm -hmm. But we always want to sound like people we've heard out there. Yeah. We always want to sound, if I had, uh, you know, like Ray is doing rap music and mm -hmm. then he sounds, you know, there's a certain way he's doing it, there's R&B mm -hmm. and then he flows in rap. I want to sound like that. But I think ev everyone is different. Um, everyone is different. Do you think that that is uh, influenced because of the... Like, you know that times have changed, times are evolving, like every day things are changing. Uh -huh. And um, we have people that just understand English. It's not everyone that understands like local language. So do you think that people doing songs in English is influenced with the fact that everybody understands English? Like not everyone can understand Tumbuka, not everyone can understand Tonga, not everyone can understand Bemba. Do you think... That's the reason why people are not embracing like local languages. They want to they want to do songs in English because they want everybody to understand what they are talking about. Yeah, th that's what they think, but mm -hmm. that's a wrong misconception. Okay, it's a misconception. It's a misconception, so to say. Mm -hmm. Why? It's because I will ask you one thing. Mm -hmm. Haven't you heard a song that you don't understand, but you are singing and vibing to it? I, a lot of South uh, African uh, songs, like on my playlist. My my mother is a big fan of Brenda Farsi. Mm -hmm. But when I asked her what's the meaning of Gudi, she said, yeah. I don't know. 
<laughs> she told me, I don't know, like but she, she likes the song. Yeah. I've heard songs. Uh, uh, I, I was listening to Namadingo, mm -hmm. and then me, I understand the Chewab, right? Mm -hmm. But when I was listening to Namadingo, the song Mapulani. So, you know, Mapulani, and then somebody was asking me, what, what does this song mean? But mm -hmm. he said, I love so much saying. After I sent, that's when he asked me, what does the song mean? Mm -hmm. That's to show you that, you know, influence has got nothing to do with the language. Okay. It's got nothing to do with English. Look at Congo. Mm -hmm. When you look at Congo, there are people who do rumba. You just hear, they, they are singing, they don't sing English, most of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah artists from Congo, they are proud with their language. But why is it that people from Zambia, you find them dancing to rumba songs? Yeah. That's to show you that influence has got nothing to do with the language. Influence has got, you know, everything to do with you being real. Mm -hmm. So when you are real, then you influence. Well, but when I... you are, I've seen people who are not influential, but they sing English. Yeah. When they sing, there is nothing that, you know, even after the song is done playing, you can't wish to go back to the song. You just want to listen to something else. Mm -hmm. That's to show you that it's not really the language that brings impact or influence. It's not. Okay. Yeah. So guys, you've heard it for yourselves from Ethos. Like he's saying, language has got nothing to do with the influence that you have. So you can do a song in a Bem you can do a song in Bemba, you can do a song in Lozi, mm -hmm. and people will impress it, people who still understand and connect with what you are trying to say. So about the song that we played earlier, Imbu. I don't know if I pronounced that one right. Imbu. So, Imbu, yes. No, Imbu. Imbu. Imbu is like you are you are from America and you try to pronounce it. It's I Imbu. 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 Not Imbu. 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 Yes. Oh, okay. What's <laughs> the yeah. difference? As long as I'm... no. Um, let me give you an example. In Bemba, when you say I don't know, right? It's Shishive. Mm -hmm. Shishi. Now imagine if I say Shishive. So am I am I correct or what? <laughs> if I come and say Shishive. So <laughs> that's what you're doing. You're trying to say imbu. It's not it's not imbu, it's imbu. Oh, okay. So that I, one sounds as if it's Chinese or something. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I definitely get what you're trying to yes, say. But yes. hey, I'm not so good when it comes to pronouncing certain ways. Ah, okay. Not that I'm skitting or anything, but I'm just not good. I like I'm it. learning. Where are you from? I'm from Zambia. No, I mean... <laughs> I'm from the Eastern province. If, Eastern. Yeah. And you don't know imbu. Because in Chipato, whenever I we are mentioning from, mosquitoes, no, you say don't, imbu. Don't judge me, don't judge me. I okay. grew up from Lusaka, so like, you know, when kids who grew up in Lusaka. Uh -huh. Yes, it's just like English and Yanja. So I pronounced in certain... Bemba. Yes, so pronounced in certain words, it sounds like, oh, what are you talking as about? As long as you pay me, I can, <laughs> I can give you... <laughs> We can have lessons, I can teach you. Okay, tell me about the inspiration behind that song. Uh, behind that song. Mm -hmm. um, this one is a Holy Ghost filled song, I, I, I can say. Mm -hmm. You know, it was, um, there was this day, a mosquito was just flying around me. Mm -hmm. And then it was moving. And then it, it just made a sound, wah, and then it went this sound, wah. Mm -hmm. And then a thought came. And then I was like, you know, okay, is there anyone in the world, like, who is, you know, who can fall in love with a mosquito, like the sound of a mosquito. Mm -hmm. Because I know animals that make sound that, you know, you can, you can listen to the sound of an animal or the, the, the noise that they make and you are, you know, it's something that makes you happy. Yeah. When you hear b birds, you know, the sound of a bird is not irritating. Yeah. But I was like, a mosquito, there is no one. Even though whites love strange things, they can love, you know, uh, caterpillars and what, they love to capture. I think everyone is irritated by the sound of a mosquito. Mm -hmm. So that's why I said, wah, wah. Mm -hmm. So I was like, it's an inspiration that just came from a mosquito itself. So okay. as I was singing, wah, wah, I'm irritated. So I said, okay, devil and panga chongo. Because I can't say mosquito and panga chongo, it means it's not gospel. Yeah. So I was trying to look for words that will actually make me talk about. Like just raising it. Yes, to, okay. to a gospel song. Mm -hmm. And then I started singing myself, I'm irritated, devil and panga chongo, wah, wah, just like that. And then it came. So... I forgot it at first. Mm -hmm. It came, I, I didn't record it, I forgot it. Mm -hmm. That's to show you that God wanted me to do the song. When I, I slept the next day, it came again. I started singing, wah, wah, wah. That's, that's when I, I recorded it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you're the one that writes, is it you who writes all the songs that you've done? Yes, or I've never, I've never done any song written by anyone. All my songs are written by me. They are, they are Holy Ghost songs where, you know, I don't get a pen mm -hmm. and a paper and then I write something and then I try to make a tune. Yeah. But a tune comes mm -hmm. and then words follow. Mm -hmm. So I'm one person, like sometimes after I pray, the moment I'm done praying, mm -hmm. I'll find myself singing a tune. Like it'll be a tune with words that don't make sense, mm -hmm. but it's a tune that I'm singing. Yeah. So after I sing that, now God begins to give me the words to put there. Mm -hmm. So I started singing, wah, wah. And then I just had an idea, say, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, but I didn't know what I'll put there. <laughs> yeah. So that's how it comes. But otherwise, I, I, I write all my songs. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, so how many people have you worked with so far? Ah, I can't count because um, I started music way back. 
Like when was it? Uh, when, when I started, it was in 2014, as in studio work. It was mm -hmm. in 2014. Okay. So I worked with a lot of artists because I remember um, in 2016 and 15, mm -hmm. I worked with a lot of people. Like I was trying to find myself. Mm -hmm. By the way, I didn't just come and found myself singing this traditional style. Like no, it took. It was a very tough journey for me to discover my style. Mm -hmm. So at some point, I was also rapping English. I was also an English rapper, you know, and all that. Mm -hmm. At some point, I was also singing songs that are common, like the way everyone else sings, like, the way every other rapper sounds, where when I sing, there's maybe a lady singing a chorus, and then I just flow like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, otherwise I've worked with a lot of people. Uh, if I'm to count, I think it, it's going to take me forever because I, I'll have to recall. But the one I've worked with the most is actually my brother, the one who's in Imbu, because oh, we had okay. two of us there. Yeah, there is Mr. Blue Churchboard. That's my biological brother. And we've worked together on a lot of songs. We've worked together on Imbu. We've worked together on Chele. Mm -hmm. We've worked together on some other songs. Like, I think together we've, we've, we have about six projects uh, of mine and on his as well. I've worked on his album and all that. But that's the one I've worked with uh, for a long time. Oh, okay. The rest is just once, then it's done. Right. Um, like when it comes to working with people mm -hmm. in terms of artists, not producers, but uh -huh. artists, what are some of the things that you look at? Or what are some of the criteria that you look at that you feel like, okay, I can relate or I can resonate with uh, this artist? All right. N number one. Number one is style. Style. Yes, style. When you say when you say style, what do you mean? Um, you, the category of the music you do. Okay. Yeah. Because imagine the way I'm doing traditional songs, mm -hmm. like, and, and then I, I'm adding an artist who's off. That it means that artist won't flow with me. Mm -hmm. That's why you, you find, most of the time, you find worshippers working together. You find rumba artists. You find um, Christine working with people who can vibe with rumba. Yeah. So it'll be off for me to get someone who, who can't relate with my style, and then mm -hmm. I put them in my songs. Because at the end of the day, they won't relate. So they want to sing rumba when it's actually... To, 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 to oh, it, it actually depends with the genre. Of me. Yes, that the genre, exactly. That, oh, okay. That's, it, that matters the most. That matters the most because you you are, you are able to team up. So I've seen some artists not because they are not talented, mm -hmm. but because they worked with wrong people. The song was not a hit because oh. it's like you sing with someone who who's got a talent, who's got a voice, but mm -hmm. the voice is not for the genre you are in. It's not for the genre you're doing. So you find you are singing hip hop and you are calling someone who who does praise. Yeah. So how will she flow with when she's not familiar with hip hop sounds? Unless that person is familiar with the sound, then you can flow together. So are you like restricted to only doing, actually, let me ask you this, like uh -huh. what, how do you describe the music that you create? It's trap undula. It's trap undula. Yes, trap and kalindula <laughs> together. <laughs> it's trap undula. <laughs> What's with you in coming up with this, putting it together and then coming up with one? Because your name? Because it, it's, so, <laughs> it, it's discovery. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's discovery. It, it, for, for me, I have never... Ever since I started this style, mm -hmm. I've never sounded like anyone mm -hmm. else out there. Okay. And so that is why you find even the titles of my songs, the albums and all yeah, that, yeah, they've got Ndagaga, you know, uh, Garimoto, such titles because I'm away from the common style. Okay. And so how are people like receiving? I, I think it's a, it's a vibe because everywhere I go to minister, as long as they are young ones, mostly when they're, where, when they're youths, not where, when they're... Because they what I realized... Others. Yes, the mothers relate with the songs, but you know, for them to stand like up, they like can't you, like you are, vibe with like they can't. for them to dance, like yeah. you know, it's 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 not very easy. Mm -hmm. But I've seen mothers where you know I'm walking and say, "Wow, you inspire our children so much. We love your music." Like mothers, most of the times when I'm walking, I meet mothers who appreciate what I do. Mm -hmm. But I mean, as in when it comes to stage work, where maybe I've got a microphone and I'm singing, mm -hmm. you know, and then they're saying, "Wah wah," and then mothers say, "Boom wah wah." You get it? It's mm -hmm. where it sounds more youthful. So. As a result, um, youths are receiving it mm -hmm. when it comes to stage, yeah. to stage work and uh, me maybe ministering on stage and all that and maybe that they relate. Yeah. But when it comes to video and the message, everybody re relates because there is that message that is in my songs. Okay. So when it comes to message, uh, kids relate, parents relate, kids because of the influence. Where they, yeah. wah, wah, what, what, they, even <laughs> when they don't understand, you find they mm -hmm. just say, wah, 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 yeah. because of the influence. Okay. Otherwise... When it comes to accepting it as in supporting, mm -hmm. I think it's youths because I've seen the turn up of youths where when I've got an event, I'm seeing more of the youths coming there. Okay, so there, in short, you're just saying the response has been good from the, from young. the young ones. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's, it's been good.
and like every time you're writing songs like what 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 is your motive like what is your goal yeah for lack of a better term i use goal like what's your goal every time you're writing your music like what's yeah let me just use go let me all not right. confuse things here all right i'll be honest with you uh -huh. um way back uh -huh. i wasn't doing music to to um, what can i say I wasn't doing music to, to to just just some some years ago, two years ago, even last year. Mm -hmm. I wasn't focusing on soul winning. Mm -hmm. I was focusing on influencing people. Because if you hear even Imbu, it's not a song that you know talks about salvation. Like mm -hmm. you know, you are trying to say, "My brother, change your ways." What? It's not like that. Yeah. When you hear Ndagaga, it's not a song that says, "Repent, the yeah. kingdom of heaven is near." No. Yeah. When you hear. Uh, so most of my songs, they are not like that. But what I, what I was simply trying to communicate with the young ones mm -hmm. is that it's not boring in Christ. Because that's the mentality that a lot of people have. They have this, it's, it's the same one I had. I mm -hmm. thought it was boring in Christ, mm -hmm. so I thought my music was not going to fit in. Yeah. So as a result, that's what I'm trying to portray to people out there who think, you know, they can be part of us because when they come, they'll have to shave their hair, they'll have to cut, and then a potato cut, they will always <laughs> have to be like, that's why in my videos you find, they, I, I keep hair, and I yeah. wear a skin jean, it'll be ripped, you know, sometimes they'll even wear such things, you know, rings and all that. What I'm trying to portray to the audience is that, you know, you are welcome. Mm -hmm. Because there are people who feel rejected to be part of us. Imagine if I'm to evangelize, right? I'm, mm -hmm. go, I'm to go and invite someone to church. And when they come to church, before they come, I actually tell them to say, I'm inviting you to church on Sunday. But before you come, make sure you cut your hair. Will they come? Someone who's been keeping dreads for three, three years, you tell them, cut, but you, I need you to church. Mm -hmm. Someone who wears jeans and you tell them, ah, no, you can't wear a jean. You need, you know, trousers. That's when you'll be accepted in church. No, you need a suit. Mm -hmm. So there are people who are like that. They think they are smart or they think they are holier than thou. So when they are doing that, they think, you know, it's a way of, you know, it's culture, kingdom culture or something. But at the end of the day, they are losing people. Okay. Because there are people, you know, who only need to hear one message that will tra transform their lives. But mm -hmm. for them to hear it, they'll require coming with dreads. They'll need to come with a skin gene and the way they are. So when you welcome them and say, come, then you attract them to listen to what the pastor is preaching or to the ministration. Mm -hmm. So I've been trying to communicate this thing to the young ones. When, that's why when people see me, they can relate. I've seen, you know, drunkards follow me and say, you know, I love your songs. Mm -hmm. So who knows the day that I'm going to bring out a song that talks about salvation. Because they love me and they love my music, they'll listen to that and mm -hmm. they may change. They okay. say that, oh, you know, that opportunity of me winning those souls because of the way I relate. So I think that's my goal. It is to influence people and tell them to say, you know, there is nothing boring about Christianity. You know what, Epas? Um, I, I have a lot of questions like concerning what you've talked about, dress code and uh, the hair or the whatnot, but we'll do that when we are uh, back from this song. I want you to look into the camera. Which, which one? I'm seeing a lot of cameras. <laughs> this one? Okay, it's the center one. Yes. Right. Uh, you introduced the song. Is it Ndakaka? Ndagaga. Yeah. Ndagaga. 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 <laughs> I pronounced this one right? Yes, it's in Dagaga. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you introduce that one and then when we're back, we'll continue chatting. All right, so Ndagaga is a song that talks about, you know, um, resisting the devil. You know, the devil will never leave until you, res you resist him. So if you entertain the devil, he's going to stay. So what I'm simply trying to communicate in this song is that, you know, when the devil comes with his tactics, his strategies, what you do, you resist him. For the Bible says, resist the devil and he shall flee from you. Mm -hmm. So when the devil is coming, whether in the form of a woman or what, then you need to resist him and you'll flee from you. So it's Ndagaga. Ndagaga. Yeah. Enjoy the song, see you guys on the other side. Yeah, yeah. Edit you crazy for this one. Chipata boy. <laughs> Slim Apis. Chipata. But Jesus Christ. <laughs> baby, baby. Baby. Baby, baby. baby. Baby, do 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 do, do do, do 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 do, do do, na 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 na, na na, na 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 na, na na, gigo gigo, gigo, gigo gigo, 
Yeah, girl. Your body's a temple, the Holy Ghost. Devil, suck a play, monga come so yo. Suck a so and listen, monga draft from a touch and go. Resist the devil and you flee from you. Then it's a color ball. Devil, he comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. There's nothing more. Quad to 20 plus 20. Devil, I'm gonna go to the 40. But I will never look back. Quad to Mukazi Walodi. I moved on and I didn't just do the right thing. I did the right thing right and I feel like devil is under my feet. Oh, it's a feeling it. He's under my feet. It's a full on in Yangarela. Now, cafe Mukaki Kufa. Told him to not blow a gale. Got his speaker and goof a toy toy. Zau Sirun Dagaga. Pepe. 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 Toto. 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 Nanga. 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 Gigo, 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 gigo. The devil's roaring like a lion, looking for who to catch. But I told him, my anointing is what you can touch. I don't live to please you. You came with your lies, but I don't believe you. I live for the Lord, the owner of silver and gold. All on the copper, Jesus, you mine. I'll save you till the day I die. No lie. Like a movie, you the one I'm being fantastic for. Elo muli imwenina ntota ni mba nyimbo za so ati pepe pepe. Unga seke. Elo muli imwenili meku meku. Bwetu bwetu ninga meke. Though the sorrows may last for a night, his joy comes in the morning. That's the kind of life that I live. If you want, you can join me. Sing like pepe pepe. Pepe. Pepe pepe. Pepe. Dodo dodo, dodo, dodo dodo, dodo. Na 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 na, na na, na 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 na, na na. Gigo gigo, gigo, gigo gigo, gigo. Still watching the weekly gospel, and that's Epas right there with the Ndagaga. Ndagaga. <laughs> <laughs> he was just like, I don't know. I felt like you were bullying me, you know, when you said, "No, I'm, I'm skating, I'm white." <laughs> like, guys, please pardon me. Like, I'll just be honest. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I value your opinion, and I respect that. Yes. Um, tell us about that video we're just from playing. Ah, all right. About the video. Yes. How was it? What was the inspiration? The video, the song. And the uh, people that you worked with. All right. So on uh, the audio song, I worked with Edit Beats. Mm -hmm. He's actually my producer that, that I've worked with for a long time. Why? It's because he's the one who relates with me when it comes to those oh. bongo, you know, zungo mangoma and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So I've always been afraid to say, what if I leave this guy and I try something with someone else who doesn't, who is not from Jipata and they don't know it. <laughs> get to kill so it's, it's, not from Jipata. Yeah, so so like, only Jipata people can do that. Uh, no, not only Jipata people, but in Lusaka, the, it's, it's rare because they mm -hmm. don't, you know, people don't uh, don't have those traditional things in here. Mm -hmm. That's why you find uh, every time there are traditional things going on, maybe it's a ceremony, people have to go to Chipata, they travel, mm -hmm. so you go to, you know, yeah. it's because that's where they're found. So mm -hmm. Lusaka is not a village. Mm -hmm. Lusaka is not, is not a traditional place. It's, it's a town. It's a town, it's a yeah. Town. <laughs> so in Chipata, there are, there are villagers actually. There are people who are familiar with people who've got, mm -hmm. who are from the village. And that yeah. mentality you find, even the music playing, so they are familiar with that. Yeah, so my right. producer, was raised from that side, so as a result, he's familiar with the sound. So even when I'm singing a song, you know what to play. So as a result, it ends up coming out the way I want it. Yeah. Okay. So that um, the inspiration on, on that one was actually, you know, when the Bible says, "Resist the devil, and he'll flee from you." Mm -hmm. Yeah. That that's that's where it came from. Like that's a book of gems. Let me let me just hold you right there. I want uh, you to hold your thought. Uh, uh, yes. And then the song. Is different like that's a Tonga name that's a Tonga word yeah and then what you were singing about is not Tonga yes <laughs> <laughs> so can you tell us like yeah okay so I, I was trying to relate with southern province people mm -hmm. and, and I was trying to relate with Chipata people mm -hmm. at the same time I was trying to relate with uh, Lusaka people and at the same time I was trying to relate with the world at large. Mm -hmm. That's why I say pepe pepe ndagaga pepe ndagaga and then I say toto 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 it's Malawi. Mm -hmm. 
nganga nganga it's sipata mm-hmm. gigo gigo it's sipata as well and mm-hmm. so i was trying to mix a lot of languages so that i can communicate with people okay that's why you find uh people from southern province love this song so much because they w- w- when they hear ndagaga it's something that they're familiar with mm-hmm. so even when it, it reaches a point when I, i'm rapping in chewa mm-hmm. they, they won't get the words but they'll get the meaning of the song to say okay. i'm trying to resist the devil mm-hmm. and then when you go to verse two it goes like you know the devil's rubbing like a lion looking for who to catch mm-hmm. but i told him man no thing is what you can touch that's mm-hmm. english yeah so now i've seen that okay tonga people will relate with that one Chipata people will relate, Malawi people will relate, but mm-hmm. now let me put English on on the other verse so that oh, okay. also people Everybody. who don't understand should yes. get it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's that. Okay. And then on the video I work, I worked with Bimak. So on the video if I brag mm-hmm. or if I lie on camera, God will send it. <laughs> God will send a thunder to strike me. <laughs> so let me be honest, on the video the creativity everything that you are seeing is mm-hmm. not my own. It's not your own. When I sent it to Bimak, he told me according to to the way the song sounds, yeah. I feel we need a bicycle. Mm-hmm. I feel we need you to wear such an outfit. That that wasn't my plan to be honest. I, I was thinking of something away from that. Okay. So he told me you need to dress old school at some point where you come with a with a jacket that looks big, not really a, a very slim fit one. Mm-hmm. And then you need something like this, maybe shoes that look old school. Mm-hmm. But on the first part, you just need to wear something that looks simple and then you have you have a bicycle okay. so that you communicate. So that's why I was wearing a short and what I'm not saying he, he got the clothes for me but he told me an idea oh, of what okay, he wanted okay so uh, when I listened to the song again and then I, I checked his idea it made sense okay. I saw okay it's a vibe so now that's when I started you know finding those things and he told me we are going to to a farm mm-hmm. so you need to to look I'll look for you like a bicycle in fact is the one who provided the bicycle oh, okay. you need like maybe water and then you're doing things like so everything that's in the video is it's is okay. oh, it's okay. not me for me, I only went there and I peered with my face and I started rapping. <laughs> <laughs> and you just did what you know how to do yes, best. Yes, I just started flowing. And oh, you know, okay. it, was, it was such an experience because you, you saw the way it was, uh, the first part where I was there and I, I was rapping and I was facing the camera. Mm-hmm. Guess what? It was like the whole scene behind, behind mm-hmm. the scene, there were people. A lot like everybody was attracted to come and see oh. me so everybody was looking at me and they were watching there and they were and just you are not distracted at all no i wasn't even focusing on people <laughs> that's who i am i was just facing the camera i was just facing the lens of the camera because mm-hmm. i knew what i wanted okay. so i need to say once i start facing people will be eyed on camera and it won't yeah, be perfect do. so i ignored and i focused on the camera mm-hmm. even when people were commenting in the background ah, what were people were making fun me i focused on the song that was mm-hmm. playing and i was miming to it and i was rapping in that but otherwise if you take someone who is shy there where i was ah I don't think they can up. even I, I yes. don't even think they can do it. There are people. <laughs> and you know that's how it is even just like in life in general. You know you have a lot of people that are there watching your life. Everybody has got something to say but we should always focus on what we want to achieve or the what goal, we yeah. want to get. And in terms of preaching the gospel, let us just focus on the cross because at the end of the day all we are trying to do be it rap, be it worship, be it praise, be it trap or whatever genre of music we're talking about, the goal is to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And now talking about dress code, you said something that's very, you know, it, it brings like a lot of debate among young people because um, someone will tell you, if I'm a Christian, Mm-hmm. How I dress, how I talk, how I do things needs to show that that person is, is, is a Christian. And okay. others will tell you it doesn't really matter because God is interested in the heart and not what you're wearing or how you're talking like or whatever things that you are representing yourself. But someone else will tell you again to say, no, Jesus represented himself very well. And the Bible tells us that we are ambassadors of Christ Jesus. So when we are representing him, we need to represent him well, well. Okay? Uh-huh. So... I, I want you to help me out here when you say no, um, you dress in a certain way, is it uh, you dress like that because you want to attract somebody who's dressing like that out there or it's just you, like that's just you, you can't change what you like, your sense of style. Alright, uh, listen to this one. Mm-hmm. The Bible says, mm-hmm. right? Yes. I am sending you, Jesus mm-hmm. told his disciples, right? Yes. He said, I am sending you mm-hmm. as sheep, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. In the midst of wolves. Yeah. So you need to be wiser like a serpent. Mm-hmm. Who is a serpent? Se- serpent, it's the devil. Yes. So the devil is wise and Jesus was saying, I'm sending you in the midst of devils. Mm-hmm. So for you to win souls, mm-hmm. for you to change lives, you need to be strategic. You need mm-hmm. to be wiser than a serpent. True. So now, how, do you, how are you wiser 
like a serpent. How can you be wise like the devil? Because the devil is not dull, he's wise. Mm -hmm. That's why when he wants to bring down a man of God, he doesn't appear as the devil with horns. No. He'll use maybe a woman or maybe money and the man of God will just backslide and mm -hmm. miss the direction of God. Mm -hmm. So meaning the devil is wise. And then Jesus is saying, be wise like the devil. Mm -hmm. So meaning it's not just about going on the pulpit and then you start preaching, hey, God, hey, hey. you go to the streets. No, you need to be wise. You think, so, okay, when I go to prison, what do mm -hmm. prisoners need? Do they need a, a man who's coming with a suit, one, some, one who's coming for, you know, from an expensive car and then mm -hmm. I go and, and preach? No, when you go to prison, you don't need the expensive car, you don't need suit, you don't need what, you need to yeah. dress like a prisoner. Mm -hmm. You need to wear something that's simple so that you can tell people to say, despite the fact that you're in prison, mm -hmm. Christ is for all. You and I, you know, we are all people and we are all loved by God. So mm -hmm. forget how you look like. Forget that you don't have a suit. Forget that you are in prison. Mm -hmm. It's about Jesus. So mm -hmm. when you go there, what do you do? You act wise like a serpent. Mm -hmm. You go with food and feed them. Yeah. You give them what to eat. You entertain them. You laugh with them. You joke with them. Then mm -hmm. you preach Jesus to them. They will accept. But if you go to prison, trust me, wearing your suit and tie and very smart, nothing to give those who are, who are actually there in prison. You don't give them food. You don't talk to them. You don't relate to them the way they are. Mm -hmm. You want them to win them. It is the same. If you go to youths right now, when you go with your potato cart, you put on a tie and smart and you are going there, listen to me. What? They won't listen to you. Mm -hmm. But when you go there, you say, guys, I'm on a mm jigger. Pa, 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 pa. I'm going to say, best. I'm going to say, best. Oh, I'm going to say, best. So, so I want to invite you guys for church. Mm -hmm. Just the appearance itself will, will determine what they will tell you. Mm -hmm. So they will tell you, oh, you are inviting us to church. And you find the same shoe you are wearing is the same shoe they are wearing. Yeah. You see, the same long hair you have is the same long the hair they have. So they won't feel out of place. Because every time the mentality that comes in people's minds when you tell them, I'm inviting you for church, is what will, will, will I dress? Yeah. So they will think, oh, so I have to cut my hair. Mm -hmm. So I'll need to go and look for a shirt and a necktie. Mm -hmm. So I'll need to look for shoes that look churchy. But there is nothing like that. Mm -hmm. Even though people say Jesus was decent, you know, Jesus... The question is, how did he dress? Did he have short hair? Did he have a potato cut? Maybe tell me Jesus had a potato cut. He had hair. Mm -hmm. Maybe tell me Jesus had a, a suit and tie. No, he had something that looked like a dress, actually. It's even, what I'm dressing is even better than what Jesus wore. Because Jesus wore something like a dress. So if we say we want to be like Jesus, let's keep long hair that looks like a woman and with dresses. So that we wear a garment and we go and with slippers. So now let's ask those people who say, you know, the way you dress should be, you know, the way Jesus was. Let's keep long hair that looks like a woman because Jesus had long hair. Check the research. Go and do your research on the Jews. Jews had long hair and Jews used to wear garments. What, what, what were the garments they were wearing? Are those things that we, we call right now in our generation, it's like for Muslims. When you see them, they wear long, long stuff there. So when a woman went to Jesus, she touched the hem of his garment. Why a hem of his, if it wasn't long? Mm -hmm. A hem of his garment, if it wasn't big. It, it means it was big. It was something that was big. So she touched part of it. Mm -hmm. And Jesus, you see, if it's something short and you come and touch here, I'll feel. But Jesus didn't feel the touch. The Bible says he felt power left him. Meaning he didn't even realize that somebody had touched the garment because it was long. It was like a dress. So when the woman touched, she touched the garment and what Jesus felt leaving was power, not the garment. Mm -hmm. So if I'm wearing something, if Jesus wore, you know, slim fit, it means if she, the woman touched, he was going to feel that someone has touched. But he didn't feel because what he wore was big. So now to those who are saying, let us dress like Jesus, let's keep long hair. And then it will be somewhere here. And let's wear the garments. And let's wear sandals. But you wear suits. Those were not there in terms of Jesus. You find a man of God who's wearing a jacket that looks with flowers here. He's saying, let's look like Jesus. Jesus didn't have a jacket with flowers because fancy jackets were not there. A jacket I, with one button wasn't there. I a, think, a, I, I think wait, that's... <laughs> one, one last point. A, a, a shoe. I've uh -huh. seen a man of God before. Mm -hmm wearing a shoe without stockings and a trousers that's very short mm -hmm. right it's what trousers. are you telling me that's what jesus wore did you wear a shoe without stocking and a trousers that was tiny and the man of god was saying some of you the way you dress but the way he dressed was not like jesus i think that's a very sensitive issue but at the end of the day you know we need to um we need to live in line with what the word of god tells us because in the Bible, clearly, we are told how men are supposed to be dressed like a man is not supposed to dress like a woman or in the clothes of a woman and the man in the woman, vice versa, mm -hmm. so to say. So I think that's a very sensitive issue, but I think I've gotten a point of what you're saying. Uh, as young people out there, what I would advise is that let us read our Bibles and let us not follow what other people are telling you us. See? Let us read the word and follow it as it is. Let us not add or subtract because everything that we need the Bible is our manual, is, it's our direction on how we are supposed to live. So, yeah, moving on to your <laughs> career, to your music, to your music side. Um, who inspires you? Like, which people do you look up to? Let me not go, like, internationally. Let's just look at locally. Like, 
Who inspires you? Who is your inspiration? Locally. Mm -hmm. My brother. Who is your brother? Mr. Blue Chess Boy. That's your inspiration? Only him? Locally. You know, um, as I told you, mm -hmm. my music is self-discovery. Yeah. So if I say I got inspiration from anyone, I'm lying. Mm -hmm. But because I started with him and if he continued to flow with such, you know, mm -hmm. a unique sound, I think he inspires me a lot. And then the other minister that, that, that inspires me, since you said locally, mm -hmm. locally it's, it's my brother. I used to be inspired by Eddie Black. Eddie Black, you know Eddie Black, right? Eddie Black. He's now a gospel artist. <laughs> He's a secular artist. He's now a gospel artist. But okay. I think I've not, not just heard from him in a while. Oh, okay. Eddie Black, I used to be inspired by Eddie Black. I used to be inspired by Ebo Chungu. So I'm not saying Ebo Chungu doesn't inspire me. But I, I don't get the inspiration to do what I'm doing from him. But I just love the man. And I love Eddie Black as well. You, you know, inspiration is not necessarily like someone who like flows in uh, what you're doing exactly. Yeah. But just how they're doing their work, how they minister, or just their, F, their work ethics, yeah. things so, like so, that. So now, at least you've, break, you've, you've made me I, understand. I brought it down. Because for someone out there who's going to think, you know, I got inspiration from them like to do what I'm doing. No, what I mean is just like how you do your music career. Because we know everybody has got an inspiration. Even me right here being on TV. I've got people that I look up to. And I can't say just because uh, this person is a radio presenter, I can't look up to them because I'm not into radio, mm -hmm. you know. That's a but thing. just looking at them like, okay, the way they work, the, the discipline that they have, some yeah. of the principles that they have applied in their lives, some of the things that they are doing that I can look up to like oh okay you know what I want to be like that I want to be disciplined like that all right so locally they, they remain the three <laughs> just three. Mr. Blue Church boy Ebo Chungu and Eddie Black okay three yeah and then internationally internationally it's KB you know KB gospel rapper mm, okay. you don't know <laughs> okay KB <laughs> inspires me and Martin PK as well oh okay um, anyone that you're looking forward to working with that you haven't worked with yet? Okay, internationally, I want to work with Lacrae. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I want to work with Lacrae. Internationally, I want to work with Ada, Ada Ehi. I've always wanted to work with, with Ada because uh, it is just something that makes me feel, you know, uh, if we, we are to do a, a song together, it can reach out to a lot of people. Ada. Mm. And okay. then and you lo think? locally. Okay. Uh, locally, I think it's a lot. Even those who don't inspire me, I, I, because al already, already I'm working with the Yellow Dove. We have a project. It's just that my producer is not around, mm -hmm. and already I'm working with Mag Forty Four. Oh, okay. Yeah, and uh, soon after that, I'm gonna work with a lot, like locally here. Yeah. Okay. So apart from music, what else do you do? What else do I do? I, I do fashion, and I do the other. Yeah, I, I that thought so. I thought so. The moment I just saw you, I, I, I just. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, <laughs> okay. fashion. You so you are a stylist, or you're just a fashion designer. You design things, or maybe you are someone that helps style people, tell them what to wear. This goes on what? This goes with what? That's my plan, but I haven't started like you know being telling people that. Mm -hmm. But at the moment, let me say most of the clothes I wear, like mm -hmm. it's it's self-made. It's where um, for my videos, like the way you saw Imbu, mm -hmm. I was wearing something like you know it looked like. Um, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> there was something that I, I was wearing here, mm -hmm. and there was like the same thing that I was wearing. It looked like like a scarf. It, it was mm -hmm. blue. It's, it was, mm -hmm. and then there was like a, a like a walking stick. Yeah. And then the walking stick was covered by the same thing, the blue, the blue thing, the okay. blue material. That was my idea. No one came to dress me up. Oh. And it, most of the times when I'm on stage and you see me, maybe I'm wearing something. Maybe it's it's a shirt and it's got different colors in here. The color is same here on trousers, on the shoes, and something like that. It's me who makes. So my plan is actually to. First, to first establish that through my own ministry, through my own music. Mm -hmm. And then I know my ministry itself will attract people to question and say, okay, who, who dresses you? Who yeah. does this for you? And, it will help and at the like same time, I want to have a, a clothing line, like oh, okay. my own maybe boutique and what. But when you, when you come there, you find clothes that are self-made mm -hmm. and all that. Yeah, so fashion, music, um, also, you know, helping the poor, like um, I, I'm going to have an orphanage soon and we've already started doing, I've already started doing that, like helping people, mm -hmm. but it's just where there is no specific location where we say there is here where we do it. Oh, but I just okay. do it like, I, you know, I visit people's homes and I just gave myself that responsibility to, to actually help them and become a blessing. And then also the other ministry that I told you now, mm -hmm. the prophetic and what, yeah, so... So fashion, We're going that to other see you become a pastor in the next five years or so. <laughs> I don't Maybe know the five will, years is a long time. I don't know the will of God when it comes to that, but I'll accept whatever it takes. I don't want to be like Jonah denying and then I go <laughs> with the fish. <laughs>
<laughs> okay. I want the fish to take me there. I want God to take me there. So, so as soon as I know the will of God, whether mm-hmm. it's becoming a pastor, I'll accept it. Whether it's not that, as long as it's the will of God, okay. I want to flow in it. You just want the will of God. To be done over my life, that's all. Okay, so it, it, it's obvious that you are um, like around your, your career, yourself, you're just like centered around the art, <laughs> art industry, yeah? Ooh. So if we were to remove like the art world or world in, art industry, like what would you have become? A pastor. It's not art. <laughs> no, you say you, for that one you're not yet sure, but you're just waiting on God. If He says today, you definitely start doing it, mm-hmm. right? But in terms of art and I mean fashion mm-hmm. and music, mm-hmm. that's like around the art circle. Yes. So if you were to remove the art industry, what else would you be doing? Soccer? Oh no, soccer is part of art. Um, <laughs> you, you, for, you forgot one thing. I said I love charity work. That's not art. Uh, no, like I know about that one, but let's just remove we'll ministry. Remove my passions. Okay, let's just remove. Yes, let's remove your passions. Okay. In short, let's just remove like your passions. Like, what else would you be doing? Hmm. If we were to take away just, ministry, yeah. if we were to take away uh, the fashion, what should you be? I'll be a useless person. Yo. Yeah. Because th- that's what God wants me to do. I'm convinced that these, these, these four things are the major things that God wants me to do. So okay. I'll be an ordinary person, maybe not, not useless, but ordinary, who just goes for work. Mm-hmm. On Monday you report, and then you get paid, you come back, and then you feed your family and all that. Because now, it, I'll become just an ordinary person. Like, by ordinary, I mean, like, you know, there are people who work in spa. Mm-hmm. All they do is that. When they work in spa, they get paid month end, they take tithe to church, yeah. they feed the family. Mm-hmm. Then life goes on. Okay. Later on, they marry and settle. You ask them, what do you do? I work in spa. Hmm. So I'll, I'll, I'll just look for a job and start doing that. Okay. The reason why right now I, I don't look for a job, it's because I, I'm flowing with my passion and God is faithful. So I don't even desire to look for a job. I want to employ others. No, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> you are really like, you know, a strange person. <laughs> for like, what better term, I'm just going to say strange. Like, I don't know, you're, um, I, you're a strong person person strong person you have this strong personality like you know what you want yeah you go get her and all that yeah. and it's really encouraging it's really inspiring it's really inspiring um now let's talk about your fears like what do you fear the most in your life what's your greatest fear my greatest fear mm-hmm. is to make wrong decisions wrong decisions yes in everything if, if i make a, a wrong decision to relationship wise mm-hmm. and I marry someone who is not right for me mm-hmm. it means I will regret oh, okay. so I don't fear to regret mm-hmm. but I fear to make wrong decisions because that's what will lead me to regret it okay so if right now imagine just after we're done with the interview and you said I want to be your manager mm-hmm. and then I, to me it sounds okay but it's a it's it's a wrong decision I've made because I'm going to regret later oh, that's okay. my fear because I lived my life regretting a lot of things and it was it was, you know, I was, I don't know if I should say I was depressed or I was down for a long period of time that I, I never wanted to be on camera. I never wanted to, to talk to people. I wanted to be alone because I was regretting certain decisions I made and certain people I got myself connected to. Okay. So I, I became afraid. That is why now, even when the idea sounds okay and you come to me, you say, I want to do this with you. I want to do this with you. The mm-hmm. first thing I do is pray. Okay. When I pray, and then I feel the freedom of God, or God ministered, you know, ministers to me vividly, like I can hear his voice loud and clear. That's when you go. That's when I give it a go ahead. Okay. Because I regret a lot of things about the past, but I accepted it and I learned from it because it, it yeah. was a lesson. Okay. That's what I got to understand. You know, um, certain things don't come that you should regret. They come that you should learn you after You should learn regretting. something, definitely, definitely. Mm, so, that's that. Uh, in winding up, you know time is just so jealous, it's not on our side, so in winding up, where can people get your music and your word of advice to every young person that's aspiring to get into the music industry? All right. So I'm facing this one? The center one. All right. Mm-hmm. So my encouragement, the word of encouragement I have to every young, um, you know, not, not just music, but someone who is gifted out there and you feel, you know, You've got what it takes to influence others. Mm -hmm. Do what you do best. Don't focus on these religious folks who are maybe wearing certain, you know, who've got what bellies and they're telling you you can't do it because, you know, it's God who gives gifts. It's God who who gives talent. Talent is a special ability to do something well. At the same time, talent is from God, is a gift from God. So when God gives you a gift, he's the one who knows the destination. Mm -hmm. So people will always, you know, give you their opinions, but opinions are not always facts. Opinion simply means someone is thinking and they are giving you their thoughts. 
So in as much as you push, you know, the more you push, the more people will come with their opinions. I, I met people myself who told me you need to sing worship. I met people who told me you need to sing praise. And I met people who told me, you know, you, you don't need to rap. But look what I, where I am right now. I'm touching lives and I'm transforming, you know, people's stories. So whatever gift you have, you need to know why God gave it to you and how he wants you to use it. Then you'll be okay. Because people will always be people. And they will always condemn what they feel is not supposed to be put in place. But God knows why he gave you what you are carrying. So for my music, you can actually find it on YouTube. You can search uh, for EPAS. You find my videos there. EPAS. You can search EPAS Imbu, EPAS Ndagaka, EPAS Chigolo, Omchede. For now, I only have four videos. But by the end of this year, I'm going to have maybe three more. I want to do a lot of videos this year. And then for the audio ones, you can uh, go on Google and you type EPAS. That's EPAS. Or easier way, you can go on Facebook and like my page. That's EPAS. EPAS. When you like the page, you ask me for the link, I send it to you. Or when you like the page, um, I keep you updated and posted about my music and you'll be getting them every time I upload. Okay. Yeah. So thank you for coming in first. Thank you for joining us today. We have been encouraged and inspired. We'll definitely follow our dreams and we'll keep preaching Jesus regardless of what everybody's saying. Amen. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you're going to close with uh, a song. You're going to do a live one. Yeah, but, 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 but. <laughs> no, 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 but, hey. no, but you're just going to do a love one. Uh, okay, so unfortunately, guys, this is what we have to say. Have you prepared advice. an instrument for me? I'm sure Isaac is doing something over there. <laughs> I think Isaac is doing something. Uh, somewhere, right. somewhere, somewhere. <laughs> okay, uh, oh, this has been the weekly hey. gospel with me, Amazing Katamanda. Be sure to catch me again next week, same time, same place, on behalf of the entire production crew of Kamni TV. We say stay blessed and keep it locked to Kamni TV. You know, we're not just another channel, even as Ephesus closes with this song please take us away all right it's just a freestyle I'll just rap as the spirit will lead me okay <laughs> so isaac are we ready is it a danceable song no it's just rap i'll just oh, rap I, I thought i was going to have to stand in and thank you holy ghost just, um, uh, uh, no even here i, I can stand okay <laughs> <laughs> thank you holy ghost okay you can restart it i didn't get where the bounce was flowing. I just okay. want to know. Okay, I know the kick now. All right. Do I have to be here or can I leave you? You can be here. Just I'm not, bouncing I don't on. Need, oh, okay. Shaka Lobronda kissing Amande. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yeah. <laughs> it's Leo Apus. It's part of boy. Oh. Uh, oh. Uh, when I'm in your presence, Dima Vama Noni. Feel the man can't explain it. Pole pole, maso kope kope with tears of joy all over my face. Ooh, chimwe la pan kope, editing the kope. I post and testify about his favor. I is lacking the grace. Ah, the chite confessi, chikundi chano bui and the chopo sa chamae. The kale guti sometimes the mazimva guy. Kuchita zonya sa kumbali guku chimwe lali. But you still forgive me and your mercy still allow me to be with you when your presence takes so much love. Mani yimbi sa kanyimbo kuti af. I feel love and no words cannot describe you. So I leave sound for verse two. You can join me sing now was a singing bow. Eh. Kulibe anga can be start, mukamati stop. Kulibe anga can be yes, mukamati no. Dimwechi yambindiku, tako ma full stop. You got the final say, say, tili ye say. Kulibe anga can be start, mukamati stop. Kulibe anga can be yes, mukamati no. Dimwechi yambindiku, tako ma full stop. You got the final say, say, tili ye say. <laughs> Do I have to continue or not? <laughs> I it's think I'm done here. It's your time to showcase your talent. <laughs> hey, it's my time. You can go, but anyway, bye guys. See you next time. All right, see you next time. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! I thought I was gonna be dancing.